Welcome back to Get Good, a series where I analyze my gameplay to see what I did right, what I did wrong, and how I could have played better. Apex is a game that rewards aggressive plays, but there's a fine line between being aggressive and being reckless. All of today's clips will air on the side of the ladder. Just because you got an advantage that you can push in on doesn't mean you blindly rush forward because that's how you end up throwing. It's like you're playing basketball and your team is ahead by 5 points at the end of the first quarter, so you walk off the court, go home, and take a nap thinking you've already won. It's not over, there's still 3 quarters remaining that your team now has to play while missing a person. Don't mistake an advantage for a win and get reckless because that's how you let other people make a comeback. The majority of the mistakes we're looking at will come from me, but the first two clips will feature mistakes from the enemy team as well. We'll play the clips through, then go back and break them down. As always, if you want to jump around, the timestamps are in the description. Let's dive right into it. Our Pathfinder goes for the crafting materials in the center, overstays his welcome, and gets downed. He's too far out of position for us to save him. I'm glad our Bloodhound didn't rush forward to help because it's too late for us to do anything. It's going to be difficult for us to win since they got an early pick and have a one person advantage. All they have to do is take it slow, approach us as a group, and overwhelm us with numbers. However, their Pathfinder went over aggressive and ziplined straight into us, far ahead of everyone else. If I didn't take so much damage from over peeking earlier, I could have beamed him as he came up. He ends up isolating himself from the rest of his team trying to force a fight. He gets a trade, but the follow up from his team arrives too late. I've already reloaded and am aiming and firing at the Mirage by the time his feet hit the floor. If their Loba, who was in the back sniping, was with him, this would have been a much harder fight. Even if she didn't do anything, her presence alone might be enough to distract me to let Mirage get a battery off. Now their Pathfinder is probably raging because he felt like he did a bunch of work but his team wasn't helpful. In reality, he baited his Mirage into dying because Pathfinder yellowed in when the team wasn't ready and now Loba has to fight solo. If they waited 10 seconds to group up and go in together, they wouldn't have fought us one by one. It would have been a difficult 2v3 and this clip wouldn't be in the video.
This time, we'll get to see bad aggressive plays from both teams. My cover usage and target isolation are sloppy, but I make far worse mistakes in other areas that I want to focus on. I notice our Pathfinder went in deep, so I move up with him. I'm not doing that well poke-wise, and I shouldn't be competing against a longbow at this range anyway. However, I'm not paying attention and didn't notice Pathfinder backed out, and I end up way deeper in the enemy team than I should be. I end up catching Mirage popping a battery. I do some damage, but I also take damage in the process. Since Pathfinder is using a Phoenix kit, I'm leaving our Bloodhound to fight 1v2 while I try to duel Mirage. I'm overextended because I can't help Bloodhound and they can't help me. I need to leave, now. I manage to get away, but I hear Mirage walking behind me so I do the biggest ego play possible by turning around to challenge him. We're both low on health, so basically whoever lands the first shot wins. I'm taking an unnecessary risk because I can get away to reset and take a fight that's more in my favor. Instead, I force an aim duel when I know my aim is incredibly inconsistent. Not to mention that I'm not certain where the rest of their team is, so I might even be facing more than one person. I down him, but our Bloodhound gets down too. Now that my health is so low, running back is dangerous because I can get picked off as I cross this open space. Being overly aggressive has put me in a really bad situation. Their Pathfinder in return goes overly aggressive. Downing someone isn't always a signal to go in, you have to consider the context. Yes, he got a knock, and yes, you want to prevent Lifeline from rezzing, but full sending it into the middle of the enemy team by yourself when you're at half health isn't the right call, especially when you're also down a person. In this case, knocking Bloodhound created some much needed space for his team, and he should have used it to reset instead of pushing forward. I go to block the doors for Bloodhound, and I catch Pathfinder using a battery out of position, so I punish him for it. That sends my ego to the moon, so it's my turn to be stupidly aggressive again, making the same mistake their pathy just did. Since we're up a person, I could have taken the safe play by thirsting Pathfinder and letting Bloodhound heal up so we can push as a team. I'm moving up because I want to capitalize on the knock I got earlier, but enough time has passed for Mirage to get revived and at least get a battery off, if not more. At best, I'm walking into a fight with even health. It's more likely, however, that I'm going into a 1v2. On top of that, I'm pathing poorly to get there. I'm not moving from cover to cover, and I'm blindly running forward, not checking angles. Taking a moment to recharge my shields. When I get there, I should have went right so I could use this debris for cover instead of cutting straight across. That way, I can break line of sight if someone appears on the roof that I didn't check, or on the side of the ship. I hear Mirage, and now I'm locked into another aim duel. I can't escape. I have no cover to use, I don't know where Loba is, and my teammates can't help me because I'm completely blocked off from them. If I lost here, I would have done exactly what their Pathfinder did in the previous clip by throwing away our numbers advantage. Not only does this reckless aggression create unnecessary risk for myself, but it also puts my teammates in danger because I might bait them into a bad position to support my terrible play. I knock their Octane and immediately move up. We have a handful of seconds where we can cross over to their side almost uncontested as their lifeline goes to revive, leaving only Bloodhound to defend against the three of us. Since I knocked Octane on the right, I want to move up on the left so that my approach is blocked off. If lifeline wants to shoot me after tapping the res, she'll have to rotate around which gives me more time to get into position. 
If I run straight at her, I'll have no cover once I climb the ledge, whereas she'll have control of this corner. This is where some mini-map awareness would have come in handy. My team is responding to my push, but they're a couple seconds behind. This means that I need to be more cautious and should focus on snowballing our advantage rather than trying to win outright. I've got good timing on my side, but I'm still facing a 1v2 until my team gets here. I knocked her Bloodhound, which is great. Octane got revived, but we're still up a person and now Lifeline must decide whether she wants to res Bloodhound, disengage, or try to fight, putting a ton of pressure on her. Since my health is looking more and more questionable, I should let my Wraith take over while I back off and use a shield battery. She can keep the pressure up until Pathfinder gets here and by then I'll be ready to go so we can fight as a group of three. Even if Lifeline manages to tap Bloodhound for the res, it takes 7 seconds to get the revive off. If Bloodhound doesn't get thirsted by then, it's not the end of the world because we're using that time to get better positioning and chip away at their total health pool. This is now a war of attrition. We have an advantage, but not enough to win, so we want to keep piling up those advantages until we do. Unfortunately, I get greedy and I keep pressing forward because I want my kill counter to be higher. I'm overreacting to the fact that they have a lifeline and I want to stop any potential revives no matter what, even at the cost of my own life. To make things worse, I slide into the open, away from my corner, but not far enough forward that I could use their bloodhound as cover. Two steps either to the left or right and I would have been in cover, but I chose to stand in the open instead. Our Wraith gets knocked too. If I didn't foolishly throw my own life away, I would have gotten a battery off by now and still could have taken a 2v2 with our Pathfinder. This was a clear example of me crossing the line from aggressive to reckless, losing a round that we should have won. We're playing 2v3 in this last clip because our third quit partway through even though we were winning. It sucks, but that's how it is sometimes. The game still felt winnable, so I wanted to play it out. Rampart gets downed early, but I catch the Revenant out of position, so at least we trade. I make sure it's relatively safe before I go for the revive. I don't want to get stuck in the middle where I can potentially get attacked from three sides. I catch their Octane running straight at me. I couldn't secure the knock however, and this is where I throw the game. This single act of me jumping over the railing was such a huge mistake that I'm going to spend the rest of the analysis on the screen because it reveals a lot of issues with my decision making. First, let's look at this in isolation, considering just Octane alone. He has no cover he can use while I control the high ground. If he ran under the stairs to break line of sight, I could use an arc star to flush him out. By jumping, I give up cover, but I gain nothing back in terms of vision or position, so all I did was level out the playing field for him. In Apex, if you find yourself in a fair fight, you messed up somewhere. From a mechanics perspective, it's significantly easier to hit him while I'm up here. If I stood completely still, the only variable I'd have to account for is his movement. So this turns into a Kovac scenario where I have to click a moving dot. If I take too much damage, I can walk backwards to break line of sight. Once I jump, I need to start accounting for my movement while I'm falling, in addition to tracking his movement. I also have to deal with the aim punch when I hit the ground, which throws me off even more. Then, if I haven't knocked him yet, I need to dodge his shots while correcting my aim and counting for my strafes because I no longer have cover I can get behind. Dropping to the low ground made this fight way more aim intensive than it needed to be. This is like if I had a nail that I needed to put in some wood and I had a hammer in my hand, but I decided to beat the nail in with my face instead. It'll still get the job done, but I made it way harder than it should have been. Now let's consider the rest of Octane's team. Even if I did knock him right away after dropping, I could have been fully exposed to the lifeline who's moving up to revive the revenant I just knocked. I think it's safe to assume most lifelines would move up in this case since there's nothing pressuring her off. 
She ends up going to Thurston Rampart, but if she stayed around this corner to fight me instead, I would have been just as dead since I'm so far out of position without cover. Not to mention my guns need to be reloaded so I couldn't contest her even if I wanted to. From a general game sense perspective, jumping into the octane creates a lot of risk because I'm putting myself in a position where if I don't succeed, we lose the game because I have no way to escape and reset if things go badly. I overcommitted and went all in when I didn't have to. In this case, they have a lifeline, so the small advantage I created by knocking Revenant earlier is going to disappear soon. And it's not really an advantage since we were down a person to begin with. I shouldn't be taking unnecessary risks if I want to win because the margin for error is already razor thin as it is. But in the moment, I didn't realize how unsafe this play was. I don't think there's ever a scenario where dropping down to fight Octane here is the right play. Why give them the opportunity to make a comeback if you don't have to? I finally get the knock, but Rampart gets downed again, and I'm at 2 HP. A game that looked very winnable a few seconds ago got thrown away from one bad decision. You could say that I lost this because of aim, but if you put yourself in a position where aim actually mattered that much when you had other options, then you messed up somewhere. Anyway, that about wraps it up for this video. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you guys next time.